Hey guys. Now, I don't want to get your hopes up that I'm diving into restoring this Dumont Clifton right now, but I did go ahead and order up some parts. Partly because I'm worried about the availability of some of these in the future, especially these axial plastic film capacitors. They're becoming scarcer and scarcer, it would seem, when the prices are going up and up in favor of the axial variety, which I really don't want to use in this set. It's getting especially hard to find name brand ones. These are all Mallory, which is now part of Vichy, I believe. So name brand, high quality, and they're all white and they look the same, so I kind of like that. So this actually takes care of all of the paper caps in the set. There really aren't all that many. There are, however, a lot of mica caps and plenty of electrolytics, especially 10 microfarad. Now, I really hope those mica caps are good because a bunch of them are 10,000 picofarad. Those are pretty pricey. Uh, I've seen them from $12 to $25 each, and there are something like uh, at least eight or so in this set. So if I had to replace all of them, that would be a pretty pricey proposition. Now, as far as the electrolytics, I know in the earlier video I was going on about these awesome Rubicon capacitors that I couldn't source in the States, at least not unless I wanted to buy a thousand of them. Well, one of you suggested that Nichicon makes a cap with similar specs, and yeah, they, they do. And I was focusing on Mauser, who I didn't have them in stock, uh, but finally I realized Digikey does. But they didn't have a whole lot in stock, so that's another reason I wanted to order some up before that, that supply dries up. I think they only had about 40 or 50 on hand, and I guess that needs at least a dozen. So, my delivery just arrived. This is their environmentally friendly packing material. So, heavy brown paper that stamps their cut up in such a way that it makes a nice padding material. Tissue paper, finally we can get to the parts. Now there's a price break for those 10 microfarad caps if you get 25. So I went ahead and got 25. Uh, they come out to, I think, $1.07 each, which is not bad for a capacitor with specs of this quality. And I'm going to talk about those more later in this video, about why in particular I wanted these caps and all the rest in here. Because these aren't your ordinary run-of-the-mill electrolytics. These are not only all rated for 105 degrees Celsius or higher, but I believe they are all 8,000 to 10,000 hours of life, which is a lot higher than your average cap, which is rated for about 85C and only 2,000 hours. Now, that doesn't seem like a whole lot. That's what I want to talk about more in this. When you look at capacitor ratings, it says the life is 2,000 hours, and you're thinking, well, if I leave my device on, geez, 2,000 hours, that's not very long at all. Yeah, but that, that uh, life expectancy is when you're at full capacity. That would be at like 85 degrees Celsius and maximum rated voltage. Then it would only last 2,000 hours. You back off on the voltage, Lower the temp, they last a whole lot longer. And there's actually a formula for that, which I'll show you later. Right now, I want to pop open this bag and take a closer look at what I got. Here's a closer look at all the capacitors laid out. Pretty much all the electrolytics I got are radio lead, because I'm going to be restuffing the twist lock aluminum cans. There are, however, a few axial leads underneath the main chassis, so I forked out the money for these. These are even more expensive and harder to find than these guys. So uh, I think I paid, I don't know, two, three bucks each for these. Um, so here's the dozen 10 microfarad, 500 volt, 105 degrees Celsius electrolytics. Set also needs a couple 20s, I went with 22. It's pretty close. Now for these, the set calls for 40s, but if you look at the parts list, they're pretty explicit about the tolerance. And for these, they said plus 80%, minus 20%. Now, 47 would have been fine, but Nichicon does not make 47, or at least Digikey doesn't carry 47 microfarad in this packaging style. They only had 39, 
or uh, 56. So that minus 20 plus 80 gives you a range of 32 to 76, I believe. And these are rated for plus minus 20%. So if I went with 39 minus 20%, that's getting pretty close to 32. I'd rather be at the higher end, so I went with the 56s. That work out just fine. And I had to get a couple safety caps. Uh, these go across the actually these don't go across the AC line. These go from one leg of the AC line to ground. So I went with the Y type safety cap. They originally just used 600 volt paper caps. That's not what. That's not a very safe thing to, to do. These are self-healing and flame-proof and all that good stuff in case they get overloaded or, or zapped. They don't uh, explode or cause a fire. And then here's all the uh, plastic caps. So notice I didn't order any resistors. Oh, Because my tentative thought is to keep this as original looking as possible. So I want to restuff the caps wherever possible. And maybe I'll leave all carbon comp resistors in there if possible. Half watt carbon comps are easy to get. Maybe a little pricey, but Mauser carries them. Other places carry them. I do have a few on hand. One and two watts are a little harder to find, but not impossible. Plus, I haven't measured any yet. Maybe most, if not all, are still within tolerance. I don't know. So I figured I'd leave that for last. So, for right here now, I'm going to pack these safely away. And I'm going to move on to showing you that capacitor life estimation formula and talk a little bit more about the ratings on these. The other day I was perusing the Antique Radio Forum and I saw a discussion thread about capacitor life and somebody included a link to this web page at Illinois Capacitor that has a life calculator on it for both aluminum electrolytic and film capacitors. Since then, I also found a similar life calculator, I think at Nichicon, or maybe somebody else, that uh, basically followed the same rules. So first, let's look at the electrolytic. So there's the formula. And here are the various parameters you can put in there. So load life rating. That is the 2,000 or 8,000 or 10,000 hours I was talking about. Then we have the maximum voltage rating, the typical operating voltage in your application, maximum temp rating, and the ambient temperature. So let's start off with your average run-of-the-mill generic electrolytic, which is 2,000, or 2000 hours of life. Oh, well, let's say it's a 450 volt cap. And I'm just going to leave all the maximum ratings in there. And typically they're 85C, and we'll go 85, and when I hit calculate, it should give me 2,000 hours. So now we can start playing around with these parameters. So, one, you, you should not be running your cap right at the maximum voltage all the time. So let's say our actual circuit's running at 400. Eh, yeah, now we got to 2250. How about if we go to 350? A little bit more, but not a huge difference. So I know in the past I say that I always like to go for a little overhead, which is good, but it doesn't actually extend the life all that much. But it does help. And at some point, it doesn't help at all anymore. So notice when I went from 200 to 100, it doesn't change. Basically, once you go below half of the maximum voltage rating, there's no change. So that'd be, what, 225, 4,000. So, at some point, it doesn't help you any to, to buy a really high voltage cap for a low voltage application. Back to 450 for now. Now, what about temperature? Let's say we're running at 80. Whoa, that made a big jump. About 75. Really big jump. And so on. Lowering the temperature makes a huge difference, as you can see. Dropping at 30 degrees Celsius, 8 times longer life. 
that's where your big difference comes in. That's why when I was saying 2,000 hours doesn't seem like much, and it's not, but you're not going to run your device at 85 degrees Celsius. Right? If you can keep it all the way down at room temperature or thereabouts, let's say 25C. Now we're at 128,000 hours. So that is the key to capacitors, is to keep them cool. Well, let's see, what the heck is 128,000 hours anyways? In terms of days, let's see, I'm at 24. That's over 5,000 days or 14 years. Which still seems like a lot, but if you're running something 24-7, like say in a mainframe computer, that's not spectacular, because you're, you're probably your ambient temperature is going to be a little higher than that, even with all your fans and cooling systems. In 14 years, you know, heck, I'm working on sets that are like 60 plus years old, so. What about if we go to a 105 degree Celsius rated cap? Look at that, we're at 512,000 hours. And how about if I go with a cap like I just bought that are light rated for 8,000 hours to begin with, and let's say it's a 500 volt cap, uh, maybe it's only running at 375. Yeah. <laughs> 2.7 million hours. That's why I bought the caps I bought. Overkill, to be sure, but uh, for a few pennies or a few bucks more, why not? So let's see, what's 2.7 million hours in terms of days and years? Uh, uh, over 100,000 days, or... Over 300 years, so <laughs> pretty safe there, I would say. Now, as far as film capacitors or ceramic, I didn't realize ceramic on here too. They last a ridiculously long amount of time, no matter what. But um, I have to pull it up. I don't, even, I don't really know what this value is. Uh, so hang on, I'll pull up a, a, a film cap and look up what the actual ratings are of this data sheet. Before I move on to the film cap, I did raise this ambient temp from 25 to 50. It's a more realistic expectation, and we're still at almost half a million hours, so very, very long life indeed. Now, for the film cap, uh, I threw in some numbers here, like 630 volt. That's typically what I always get, 630 volt polyester or polypropylene film capacitors. Let's say we're running it at 400 volts. I looked up some typical caps and they have a temperature rating of 125. And again, let's say the ambient temp is 50 degrees Celsius. Now for the load life, I'm not entirely sure. But for the one I pulled up here, uh, they tested it at a life test of 1,000 hours. So I plugged that in and or 4.3 million hours. <laughs> I really don't think we ever need to worry about these film capacitors wearing out. And really, I think this number is actually should be higher than what I plugged in. A couple other parameters I should mention are ripple current and ESR. Some of you may have seen or may own a little pocket ESR meter. Those are typically used to check capacitors and flat screen TVs, switching power supplies, computer motherboards. Those testers put out about 100 kilohertz and they check for the resistance in the uh, capacitor. However, that's really not a factor when you're selecting or testing capacitors in vintage gear because they are not switching at high frequencies. They're typically used to reduce ripple at 60 or 120 hertz. You can see they don't even list the ESR for some of these caps, just a couple way down here. What you might want to put some consideration towards though is ripple currents. These are pretty high grade caps I've got up on the screen right now. and see they handle pretty substantial ripple current. The one I chose, I believe, uh, is this guy that can do uh, 560. If you look at low grade caps, cheap caps, uh, that number might be less than 100 milliamps. 
you really need to do a little bit of math and some figuring to see what kind of ripple current your capacitor is going to be handling in your particular app application. Basically, it has to do with how heavy a load you've got and what your voltage into the filter cap is like. In other words, how much current is surging in and out of that capacitor to supply the load. Speaking of ripple current, let's take a look at some of the capacitors I ordered for my RCA 630TS. In particular, these guys. Also from Nichicon. These are part of the PZ series. Very high ripple current. High temperature. And in this awesome pencil case. Which is fantastic if you're going to be restuffing the old twist lock cans. No problem fitting a whole bunch of these inside of these cans. I believe they're only rated for 2,000 hours of life, but as you've seen when you run these at a lower temperature, the life goes up dramatically. So these are some of the best caps out there for high ripple current and small size. A little bit expensive though, ranging from about four to six dollars for the sizes I wanted, which are like you know, 82 microfarad, 450 volt. So, it's another interesting option out there for you guys. Alright, that's about all I've got to say right now. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the latest technology out there in capacitors and why I always recommend to get high temperature caps when possible.